Good morning and welcome to the broadcast. We're continuing our series this morning titled The Love of Christ for His Church. We're going to ask you to open your Bibles to Ephesians chapter 5. And we'll begin reading this morning at verse 14 where we left off last week therefore he says awake you who sleep arise from the dead and Christ will give you light see then that you walk circumspectly not as fools but as wise redeeming the time because the days are evil Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. And do not be drunk with wine in which is dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. Jesus Christ to the Lord giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ submitting to one another in the fear of God verses 14 to verse 21 may God have a blessing to the hearers of his red word. The love of Christ for his church. On last week, we opened with the church is likened to a bride as we looked at verses 1 to 20, well, to 13 in last week's broadcast. Okay? And we learn that in those first 13 verses that the church is likened to a bride and the bride we learned concerning her duties as the church was to be separated. That's right, to be separated. Well, this morning we going to learn how uh, the bride has other duties. And verse 14 to 16 make us understand that she as the bride should be serving. That's right, serving. Let me ask you this morning, are you serving? Are you serving? Are you just a pew warmer? You know, some people say, well, I go to church and I, but all you do, you show up and you just sit on the pew. You won't even get up and give God praise. You won't sing when the choir singing or the congregation singing. You just sit down like a, 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 a not on the law and you just sit there and I'm wondering now did you come to just be entertained according to Hebrews we supposed to assemble ourselves together and each of us when we come supposed to we supposed to contribute we supposed to uh, be a part of the worship experience putting our two sin in huh making a joyful noise to the Lord giving God praises for the great things he has done for us oh I like them old saints who used to come to church and boy, when they gave them opportunity to testify concerning the goodness of Jesus, boy, one of them mothers will break out and say, don't you tell it, 
Let me tell it what he done for me. Oh, hallelujah. How about you this morning? Uh, uh, can you tell it for yourself? Can you make a joyful noise? The psalm to say everything that have breath ought to praise the Lord. So you ought to come, oh, with a praise on your lips, hallelujah, and let us magnify the Lord together. Oh, praise God. So here, the bride, her duties according to verse 14 and 16. Look what he said. Therefore, what? Awake. Verse 14. You see it there in your Bible. Awake, you who sleep. Arise from the dead, and Christ will give you light. Then he tells us in verse 15, praise God, still serving, to be serving. The bride need to be serving. See then that you walk circumspectly. Praise God. Circumspectly. See that you walk circumspectly. What does that mean? In other words, you walk in carefully. You walk in so careful. It's the idea of uh, looking around so careful so as not to stumble. It means walking intelligently, huh? Uh, not in ignorance, but intelligent. You're concerned uh, with every move you make. You want it to be positive steps. Oh, hallelujah. So he said then that you need to walk circumspectly. Because why? Uh, the bride, her duty is to be serving. That's right. Again, are you serving? Are you just constantly want to be served? Oh, hallelujah. So you ought to be serving. So you, we going to say, in verse 16, redeeming the time because the days are evil. What, what, redeem, to buy back? What is he saying then? Let's let's do a, give a better translation or interpretation here. As we obey His will, Paul is saying, uh, we need to buy up the opportunities, redeem the time, buy up the opportunities. In other words, don't waste time, don't waste energy, don't waste money don't waste your talents and that which is apart from his will you know we need to buy up opportunities how can i be serving uh my best in these areas to make make good use of my time to make good use of my energy to make good use of my money Oh, hallelujah. And make good use of my talents and my gifts uh, to do his will. Because as the bride, I must be serving. I must be serving. Oh, a charge to keep I have. Oh, hallelujah. A God to glorify a never dying soul to save and fit it for the sky. And I like that next verse he said, to serve this present world, my calling to fulfill. Oh, praise God. Why, I, I, I'm trying to do, oh, hallelujah. Oh, are we serving? Are we serving so he said redeem the time because 
the days of evil. Now, I don't have to tell you that. Just look around or turn on your news. And guess what? We living in a day and time. We ain't got to travel to New York City or Las Vegas or California. You know, back in the day, certain things didn't happen in the small cities. But now it's happening in your little city. It's happening in your back door, in your backyard. Am I right about it? Amen. So let's note then as we move to verse 17, so we don't learn so far that the bride, since the church is likened to a bride and we, we talking about the love of Christ for his church. And since we're his bride, we, we're looking at some of our duties as being his bride. Uh, to be separated, to be serving, then uh, in verse 17, he make us understand that we need to be searching. You said searching for what? Well, look what he said there. Therefore, do not be unwise, but understand what the will of the Lord is. Okay? So so what, what is it? Uh, to be searching. How, how I'm going to know what the will of the Lord is? Well, that's a good question. And you know, you're not going to know that if you don't know your Bible. You're not going to know that if you're not involved in Bible study. You're not going to know his will if you don't go to Sunday school. Are you not part of a cell group learning more about God's word? And he let them understand the same Paul that wrote this letter to the church in Ephesus. He writes to the church in Colossae in Colossians chapter 1 and he made them understand if you will go to chapter 1 look at verse 9 for this reason we also since the day we heard it do not cease to pray for you and to ask that you may be filled with the knowledge of his will in all wisdom and spiritual understanding that you may walk worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing him, being fruitful in every good work, and increasing in the knowledge of God, strengthened with all might, according to his glorious power, for all patience and long suffering with joy, giving thanks to the Father who has qualified us to be partakers of the inheritance of the saints in the light. So, so what, what am I saying? What he tells us here answers the question, uh, what am I as the bride to be searching for? Well, we learn in verse 17, we searching, he said, therefore, do not be unwise, but understand. So, to understand, I got to be in the know. It I got to be searching for what the will of the Lord is. Okay? So if I'm searching to know what the will of God, and it, so Colossians said, the only way I can know, according to verse 9, that I may be filled with the knowledge of his will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding, I got to understand that by being in personal Bible study, understanding what God is saying to me. You know, you want to uh, uh, go to the root worker or you want to go to the fortune teller and, and you say, well, I don't understand uh, what is the will of God. It's in these 66 books from Genesis to Revelation. And for you to know that, it's sad that so many will be part of a church or religious organization for 20 to 30 years and don't know simple Bible truths. 
they can't even explain to someone who's a non-believer the doctrine of the virgin birth the doctrine of justification. Hmm? They can't even explain salvation. These things you should know. So this is what he's saying as the bride, we need to be searching, searching for what? Praise God. Searching, praise God, to understand the will of the Lord, what the will of the Lord is, okay? And then finally, he there, he said, we need to be spirit-filled. Look at verse 18. And do not be drunk with wine, but be filled with the Spirit. That's right. We, it is our aim each day to be filled with the Spirit. Now, he, now, make you understand now, this, this, I know you said, well, I, I have the Holy Spirit present when I accepted Jesus as Christ, which put me and identified me with the believers, put me in the church. But you, you studied out. Paul is saying here, uh, uh I'm talking about, uh, uh, you need to be filled, and, and this is, uh, well, let me say it this way. You, you ever fill your car up with, with gasoline or diesel, whatever your car run from, okay? Or uh, if you got an electric car, uh, right now, uh, tells or uh, electric motor, motor, or uh, automotive, listen, same applies. You can run just X number of miles on that charge. You can run just X number of miles on a tank of gas. What you have to do, once you run that out, that's why they have a service station. Oh, hallelujah, praise God. You need to be, go get filled. Yeah, I ain't, no, I ain't talking about your identity in knowing Christ. Now you stood it out. I, I wish I had time this morning. I'm telling you, here Paul is saying you need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Why? You you want Him in charge, just for okay. And hopefully you understand this. Some of you I've heard men tell me. Now I, I don't know nothing about this, but I've heard men tell me. They said, preacher, I used to couldn't tell my boss man certain things that I really wanted to tell him. But then when I went and got me some liquor and got halfway drunk or lit, then I can go face my boss man and tell him what I wanted to tell him. I said, Lord have mercy. But I got the point he was getting at and, I, and I'm saying this to you, just like what he was saying once he got the liquor in him, the liquor had control of him. Paul is saying, you want the Holy Spirit to have control over you. Oh, hallelujah. So he said, don't be drunk with wine in excess or in dissipation, but, but be filled with the Spirit. And, and, the, and the ideal is that the Holy Spirit have control over you. And we got beautiful illustrations in the scripture where the Holy Spirit had control of Philip. You, you read it in Acts where Philip was in a hot revival, but because the Spirit had control of him, uh, the, the, the scripture said the Holy Spirit told him to, to, to pause at the revival and go down there and meet that man, that Ethiopian eunuch, praise God, that needed an understanding of the scriptures. Oh, praise God, hallelujah. So he's saying, praise God, uh, that you need to be filled with the spirit, praise God. And then finally, let's look at the last one before we close it out this morning. And that's in verse 19 and 20. He says, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns, spiritual songs, 
singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. So he's saying that the bride, that's right, her duties is to be separated, verses 1 to 13, her duties is to be serving, verse 14 to 16. Her duties is to be searching, verse 17. Verse 18, her duty is to be spirit-filled. And then verse 19 and 20, her duty is to be singing. Now, oh, praise God. Oh, y'all, it's something about singing like what this text is talking about. And, and maybe, maybe, maybe I got to help you understand what he talked about here. Come on now. I ain't talking about when you get there to church. And the choir or the praise team got it going on. No, no, believe me. What I'm, what Paul is talking about here, is it, 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 it's different. It, it's, it's. Let, let me help you understand. Look, look, look at it again in your Bible. He said, uh, "You, you, you, the bride. We, we, the church is likened to a bride and." Her duties is to be singing. And that's why, now you see it sometimes on them old westerns when they did have church service. I thought that was the beautiful part. You will see them at church, everybody standing. Everybody had a hymn book. And everybody was singing. It's just something about everybody singing. Y'all need, need to bring this back because I remember coming up uh, back in yesteryears when we went to church when there was singing going on uh, in worship service, everybody stood and everybody was singing, okay? But, 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 and, and what a beautiful harmony, as he says there, uh, to be singing. Praise God. Uh, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns, spiritual songs, uh, singing and making melody in your heart to your Lord. Why? It's something about when you home in your car. You you ever been singing? I'm talking about you. Eat, the radio ain't even got to be on, but God gave you a song to sing, and you be singing. Sometimes you. Vacuuming boy with your vacuum cleaner and you are you dusting in the house or you clean it up and boy God just give you a song. Boy, y'all know what I'm talking about. You wish you knew the tune. You 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 wish you could just copy and, and, and put down notes where it could be heard again. But for some reason, even when you vacuuming with the vacuum cleaner. And boy, you singing and making the melody in your heart to the Lord. And you say, oh, Lord. Boy, you churching, boy, and the Holy Ghost in there with you. And boy, you just having church all by yourself. Oh, hallelujah. But it, you you making that melody and you singing. Boy, don't it sound good? <laughs> oh, praise God. Hallelujah. So this is what he's saying. Singing. And make a melody in your heart, huh? Making a joyful noise unto the Lord. You singing to the glory of God and all oh, the vacuum cleaner enjoying it. <laughs> Praise God. Hallelujah. But you 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 serving and you spirit feel. And, and he said to Brian, we ought to be singing. You no, know, sometimes we are, we are walking into the office at work uh, or the warehouse where we work or wherever we go to work and, and we, we, we come off the elevator singing, 
singing in the elevator, singing to the parking lot. As we coming from the parking lot to the, the, the foyer or the entranceway of the job, we ought to be singing, singing in our neighborhood, singing when we go get the trash uh, uh, container and bring it back to the side of the house. Are we singing? You ever notice the folks out in the world when they got their music blasting, like they got their windows down and they playing all that and they're purple, purple, and they're shaking and rattling your windows? Well, why they can't hear us? We are the bride. We are the church. Do they hear us singing? Huh? Why can we can't break out? I am dying, O oh Lord. I've heard thy voice. Huh? Why, why we can't break out? Take the Lord with you everywhere you go. Huh? Why don't we break out with a song? And sing to the glory of God. Singing and making melody in our heart to the Lord. So let us continue to do the things pleasing in the Lord's sight. Well, we're going to pause there and we're going to come back on next week. And come to understand what the bridegroom responsibilities is. The love of Christ for his church. We've learned so far the bride's duties. But my, if we're going to have a wedding, you got to have a bride and a groom. So on next week, return and we will learn what the bridegroom duties and responsibilities is. Until then, please remember to give thanks R2GT.